everybody hope you're doing well wanted to hop on really fast and talk to you guys about what I like to call required endings today required endings in your personal life and some of the most successful leaders that I have ever met know how to navigate this sometimes a little bit painful but very important step well in their personal lives you know some blessings in our life were always only meant to be a seasonal blessing and not something that lasts our whole life now sometimes you will have some things that last longer um, in your life whether it's relationships whether it's you know alliances with certain businesses or companies or ministry opportunities you know there are some things that are more long term but as a as a whole a lot of our stuff that comes into our life is more of a seasonal thing a lot of the time and the leaders that I know um, that are really successful have learned how to navigate this piece well and to embrace when it's time for a natural ending of a thing so that they can receive the best that God has for them in that next season and I think what we're tempted to do so often as humans is we're tempted to hang on to what feels comfortable we're tempted to hang on to um, what's familiar and what feels good to us even if it's dysfunctional even in our lives even if it's not producing a lot of fruit in our personal lives and that can get us into a whole lot of trouble down the line because we then begin to compromise and you know sometimes this can be really tricky because things that were good for you in a past season might not be best for you in your current season and so you constantly got to do inventory in your life as a Christian and really bring this stuff to God and say, God, what do you think about this thing? Am I investing my time and my resources in the things that are the most beneficial to me right now? And what is this season supposed to look like according to you, God, over my personal life? Um, so let me give you kind of a silly example to run with. I think that a lot of times what we do is we romanticize the old. And I'll give you an example of that. So let's say we got a guy and a gal. And... Um, the guy's in the relationship with this gal, and they've been dating for two years. Let's say it's a pretty longer-term relationship, right? And the guy knows that there are some long-term things that this girl that he's dating, that he loves, that he really cares about, does not have in common with what he's looking for in his future spouse, right? And so he's sitting there, and he doesn't have that peace from God. He's not, you know, getting the confirmation that he needs that this is his future spouse. But the problem is he really loves this girl. They've got a good friendship. They've had a good connection for a long time. It's familiar. It's comfortable. You know, they know each other well. And so he's got a decision to make. You know, is he going to continue to hang on to this dead limb, so to speak, um, this thing that maybe at one point was good, but it's not the direction that God is calling him to at the current moment with this person. So is he going to be obedient and is he going to embrace, you know, pruning in his life in that area? Or is he just going to keep it and procrastinate over that thing in his life um, just because he's afraid to address that kind of a thing? And I think so many of us are kind of guilty of this in different ways. We'll hang on to that job that is just ridiculously horrible and we won't even try to go look for something new just because it's familiar and we've invested years in the company you know I, there's all kinds of examples of this but I think the primary question you need to ask yourself is if I invest more time and more effort into this thing will it bring about the change that is needed for this to be a yes over my life and some circumstances, you can put in as much effort as you want over that situation, but it's not going to change the reality of the no. Those are the times when you need to let go of something, when you need to let God prune that branch in your life. Now, I'm not saying that we cut off people and circumstances immediately. That's not at all what I'm saying. In fact, a lot of times you need to push through adversity. Um, and the times when I think it is crucial to push through adversity is, let's say that you have an underperforming employee at a company, for example, and you know you sit down and you have a meeting with them and you say, hey, these are the areas where um, we can see that you're struggling a little bit. Let's give you some tools to um, help you and let's see if we can get these areas corrected so we can keep you on. You know, a good employee, one that is probably still worth keeping around, is going to say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I acknowledge these things, help me to improve, I really want to get better, right? Um, whereas an employee that's going to be a little bit harder to work with is going to say, 
well, none of that applies to me. It's this person, this person, this person that are causing the problems. It's not me. And I've had all this extra stuff going on in my life. And I've had this that's caused me to be late. And I've had this that's gone on in my life. And there's a very big difference between the two people. One person took ownership and was open to a growth mentality. You can do a lot with that kind of a situation. The other situation was a person who was casting blame. It was a person who... Um, was not yet ready to accept ownership. And that might be an example of a dead branch situation where unless that person is forced to face the consequences of their actions, they're probably not going to change, right? And so there are some people and situations that are worth pushing through, that are worth investing in. And so much of that has to do with the character response behind the person. But what happens is when you identify an area, whether it's you yourself or someone else, um, in your life or in your circumstances where, you know, investing more in that thing is not going to help the problem. You know, let's say that you're, you keep trying to pour into an employee who just is not going to change their ways. You know, it's better to cut the branch a lot of the time because maybe it's not even that they're a bad person or a bad employee. Maybe they're just not fit to that job, you know, or maybe it's, you know, if that relationship, you know, God's telling you, hey, there's some things here that are, you know, it's not that they're a bad person. It's not that you're a bad person, but this is not a good fit. By you hanging on to that is preventing both of you from stepping into better God potentially appointed opportunities down the line in your life. And so I wanted to give you um, kind of a silly analogy today about why it's important to be obedient with ending things in God's timing and not just dragging them out because we're afraid. So why are people afraid to prune a lot of the time? I think that people are afraid to prune or to engage in a necessary ending, those difficult conversations a lot of the time because they're comfortable and familiar with the dysfunction. We already kind of talked about that, but also because it can feel really painful, right? And a lot of people don't enjoy conflict, right? I don't know many people who just enjoy conflict. I know a few, um, <laughs> but a lot of times we just don't like to stir up the boat, right? And it can be very painful. Let's say you're breaking off a relationship that's happened for a while and you've opened up a lot to this person and you really care about them, but you just recognize that it's not right. That's gonna be a little painful, you know? And it's, you've gotta acknowledge those feelings and you've got to bring that stuff to the Lord. You know, I think the worst thing you can do is to numb yourself when you're going through a hard transition and to try not to acknowledge it. You've got to feel that stuff. You've got to work through it to really heal a lot of the time, you know. But here's the deal. I think so often we label these circumstances where you've got to fire the employee that's underperforming and you've tried to work with them and nothing's working. Or you've got to cut the relationship that isn't ultimately God's will. It's got some characteristics of it, but it's not ultimately God's will. You know, I think that a lot of times we deem those things as negative in our minds and we deem that pain is bad, right? That's just our natural inclination a lot of times as humans. We equate pain to being bad, right? Because pain is often a sign that something needs to change. But let me give you an example of how pain is not always bad. So let's say that you've got a cavity and you go to the dentist and they need to fill that cavity um, so that it doesn't turn into you needing a root canal or something a lot worse down the line, right? Well, I don't think one person enjoys getting that cavity filled. You don't like getting a shot. You don't like the pain of the drill. You don't like all that stuff. You don't like having your mouth numb for a while, walking around like a goofy looking person, right? Nobody enjoys that part of the process, right? But in that circumstance, pain is actually good for you because it's it's cutting off, it's addressing that dead thing, it's addressing that thing that could cause a lot of problems in your life down the line if it's not addressed. And yes, there's temporary pain, but it's going to lead to success and health for you down the line. And so a lot of times you've got to look at these necessary endings in your life, these severings, these prunings that are so, so important in your personal life as preparing the way for something better. Yes, there may be temporary pain in the moment. There may be something in the moment where you go, wow, this really hurts. Um, but it's going to prepare you to be better off down the line. So immediately when you make up in your mind, and you'll have to make it up ahead of time, it's time to end this thing. This is not of the Lord. Used to be good for me. Used to be fruitful. But it's time to move in a different direction. Pray about this stuff, y'all. But once you make that decision, the devil will then try to romanticize that thing that you're trying to cut off. How many of you guys have been here before? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. 
So let's say that you have been in a relationship with someone and there's several things that are legit deal breakers for you and for that situation that God has pointed out. The devil will immediately come in and only try to show you the good parts of that situation because he doesn't want you to sever that because he doesn't want you walking in what God goodness has for you in your future. He wants you yoked to compromise, right? And so he'll show you how much you love their personality. If it's a relationship, he'll show you what a good person they are, how aligned you are as a Christian. You know, he'll point out all that stuff that's good, but he'll leave off the stuff that doesn't line up, right? And so often we will romanticize and kind of picture in our minds a person that's not reality. We'll only picture the good behind that employee, behind that, um, you know, person in our lives. We will kind of put this situation on a pedestal as soon as we think about losing it, right? And if we're not careful, it can lead us into trouble. But you've got to keep in mind, you guys, those good pieces are a part of that person, but it's not the whole person. You are addressing the whole person, and that's what God's trying to get you to get at. You know, there may be a couple parts to your job that you like, but if the majority of your job is dysfunctional and unhealthy and doing really bad stuff, You've got to address the whole thing, but the devil will try to pinpoint those one or two things that are a little bit better to try to get you to hang on to the dysfunction. And so you can't romanticize the things that God is telling you to let go of or you will never let go of them. Amen. So you've got to be willing to give up the ashes to receive the beauty that God wants to bring in your life. You know, God could have an amazing godly spouse for you down the line, dating couples. But, you know, if you're hanging out with the guy who has cheated on you and who is not seeking God in their personal life, you know, God's not going to bring your godly future spouse while you're hanging on to that mess in your personal life. You've got to be willing to create and to facilitate that necessary ending a lot of the time in your life to open up the door to new. And so, you know, pruning is, and it doesn't even always have to be that drastic. Sometimes you can sit down and look at the activities that you're doing as a family. You know, let's say... Um, you have kids and they're in like four different outside activities you know they've got ballet they've got guitar lessons they've got you know baseball they've got you know whatever it is and they've got all these different things well you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off every night of the week without any family time without any time for rest because you want your kids to be involved in good stuff right you know a good parent's heart um sometimes will do things you know that can get really busy really fast and so sometimes you need to sit down together as a family and maybe the kids don't need two activities a piece maybe they need to pick their favorite one because that's what's going to be best for your family in terms of holistically how you're going to function throughout the week so you know maybe the daughter's taking piano and ballet and you need to go to the daughter and say hey i noticed that you know you're not as crazy about this ballet class and you're more you know, a fan of the piano, can we cut, can we prune this thing over here for now so that you can really focus on what you enjoy? And so it doesn't always have to be life or death decisions, but as a Christian, God constantly calls us to take inventory of things that aren't working. You know, maybe in a marriage, you're trying to have a date night with your spouse and you set it up, and yet every single time you try to go on the date, you end up talking about your kid's trauma and all this stuff, and, you know, it never really feels like you truly get that outing and that, you know... Um, time of respite that you're looking for. Well, maybe you guys need to talk as a couple and prune and say, you know what? Okay, we're going to discuss all the kids stuff ahead of time. That's the rule now before we go on this date so that when we're on the date, we can really enjoy each other. And that's not the focus of what's going on. So we constantly evaluate ladies and gents, what's going on in our lives, and we need to ask ourselves, is this producing fruit? And is this an area where if I continue to invest in it, it could potentially make a difference? And if not, if it's just something that's not going to change no matter how much you invest in it, then it probably needs to go, and it needs to be something that you are willing to allow God to prune in your life. And I also want to remind you of this. Just because it was good for you in a previous season doesn't always mean that it's what God is calling you to in a current season. You could have a friendship in your life from your past who was so good for you at the time, who is not a bad person, who poured into you in a fantastic way, but they're not called to be currently aligned with you now. That could be a church, a mentor, that could be all kinds of different stuff, you guys. And, you know, sometimes it hurts to kind of distance those things or to sever you know, things sometimes. But if you want to walk in God's best over your personal life, you got to get best at this um, necessary endings that I like to call it concept in your personal life. So if you see a dead branch in your life or if you're just overwhelmed and you don't have any time, look at what God is calling you to prune and bring it to him in your prayer times. And I promise you, it may hurt a little bit, just like that trip to the dentist. <laughs> 
um, when you do decide to cut off that thing, especially if it's been dead for a long time, sometimes you've been, you know, hanging on to it and that hurt's going to last a little bit longer. But I promise you when you do that and when you do get obedient, it prepares and opens the way for God to sing the new and the good things that he has for your life. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.